Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of CookieCast. Today on CookieCast, it's the Darkest Timeline podcast. Bit of a quick one this week. Not that quick, but quicker. Joys of breaking a bone, people, means you don't really do a lot. Uh, There's a lot more entertainment this week. Um, I don't mean I'm entertaining, I mean we talk about games and movies and TV more. Um... And just general stuff from the week, not not the busiest of weeks, you know, with the broken bone. Uh, before we get started, please do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Drop any reviews you want to drop and share the podcast around. Yeah. So let's get started. Here we go. This is Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline podcast. Hello. Oh, it is working. It wasn't before. How are you doing? Are you alright? Quick heads up. Uh, This is probably going to be fairly short. So strap yourself in for like an hour and a half's worth of podcast. You know what's interesting about breaking a boat? Or breaking your arm or or whatever? Uh, Yeah, you really don't do an awful lot in the space of a week. Um, so yeah, not a huge amount to talk about. Certainly not the sort of stuff I thought I'd be talking about. Um, so yeah, there's some bits to talk about. There's some entertainment stuff to talk about. Um, and that's it. So, so there. Uh, I went to the hospital. Um... I had an appointment to go to be seen by a consultant for my break. (coughs) And that was that. So I went. Appointment was for half two. I got there and told the reception over an appointment at half two. I was uh, was early, as as is always the way. Uh, They were like, yep, go down, take a seat. I went down into the waiting room and there was nobody there. And I went, well, that can only be a good sign. Nobody waiting. Even if there's one person in right now being seen, I imagine there's multiple people seeing people. So this is going to be quick and painless. So me setting all that up means you already know the way it went. (sighs) So, more and more and more and more people came to the waiting area. It was the weirdest thing. The place was empty. Then it wasn't. People coming for appointments because it was not far away from the reception. So you could hear people coming for appointments. One person came and said that their appointment was 45 minutes after my appointment. So... It's things like that, people like that you you don't need to worry about. There was a guy that had been brought seemingly from either a ward or like A&E or something like that. Um, But not long after sort of getting there, being there for a little while, sitting in the waiting room, it became quickly apparent that there was only one consultant seeing people which seems strange as the room the waiting room just filled up more and more and more another completely strange random event was there was a girl in the waiting room and she'd been in A&E when I was when I went to A and E, she well no. When I went to minor injuries, she was in minor injuries as well. So that was just totally weird and random. Um. So. Oh, 
somebody was in before me then the girl who had been at minor injuries uh, on on the Sunday she went in next she was in for quite some time and in that time the waiting room started filling up so somebody came we had people had appointments the guy came from somewhere else not not someone who had an appointment so the girl left eventually she was in there a long time did from where i saw her in minor injuries and when i saw her in the waiting room to, for the consultant uh, it did seem like she had multiple injuries there was like a foot the, she went away in a boot there was a hand situation looked like a couple of fingers involved um so i imagine you got more than one issue like if i'd have broken my toe i'd have probably been there for a toe break and an arm break so then after she left the guy who'd been brought in not for an appointment he went in next so it was kind of like uh, okay you know feels fine legitimate whatever so he went um and he was in there a very long time like i say only one person seeing people so time starts ticking um one of the experiences that i've had having this um this break is i get very tired at random points in the day um so i was i'm not going to sugarcoat this one i was falling asleep uh sat in a waiting room that was reasonably warm um so by the time this guy left i'm pretty sure we've been there 45 minutes so starts falling into the realms of what the hell's the point in booking an appointment if well for for a lot of places i don't see the point in appointments because it's just like well you don't stick to the times you don't adhere to any of the you know the appointment sort of criteria so what was the point in booking it you should, you might as well have just said turn up when you feel like it um I'm, i obviously i do understand appointments i'm not that dense so they bring this guy out like oh we're gonna get you some transport all this and the other then like oh do you, do you want a cup of tea while you're waiting oh yeah i'll have a cup of tea i'm like yeah waiting room full of people if we're getting some drinks going i'll have a coffee please so in my head i'm like i'm i'm, I'm definitely next i'm definitely going in now um i've taken leanne with me uh and, and the boy um uh, and she was like oh, you know this was at the point that she started talking about the amount of time we've been there obviously it's not ideal situation to just be there um things like we'd parked but we'd parked a distance you know have a walk of all this but parked in a car park you can only put two hours on all this sort of stuff and at this point i'm like i'm going in next so i said she was saying about the amount of time and i was like yeah if i'm honest if i hadn't been sort of you know if i hadn't been me next kind of situation i'd have probably screamed at which point they came out and asked for a different person <laughs> and there was a guy a young lad sat in front of me who probably gets up takes himself off into the room and all i got from that was leanne turning to me and going uh how about now you're gonna scream now and i was just like what is happening here is this some sort of wind up so after an hour now then here's here's the thing like I said, park the car, put two hours on the car, 
and then walked 20 minutes to the hospital. So, you know, we can do the maths here, 20 minutes in an hour. Uh, now I'm starting to panic that the car's going to run out of parking. So, um, this young lad's in there for a little while. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely going to have to be next, I'm afraid, because uh, otherwise there's going to be a murder. As it was, it was my, my turn next. I went in and I got, uh, sorry for keeping you waiting. You've been waiting quite a while. And me being, I don't know, do we just call it British? I just went, oh no, it's fine, don't worry about it. <sighs> <sighs> so anyway, I had, I, had a, I, had, I had my appointment with the consultant and um, when the appointment starts with, okay, so it's a little bit worse than we initially thought, you go, ah, oh, no. Because basically, I was going to find out what they were, what the plan was, what they were going to do with the arm. Um, it's not not in a cast, so the my worry was that they were going to put it in a cast. Um, obviously, uh, surgery had been mentioned, putting a wire in had been mentioned. Don't want any of that. Um, leaving it as it is, that was also an option. So when she started with, it's a little bit worse than we initially thought. I went, oh no. It's like surgery, might have to put in a cast. Um, so rather than there being one break, there were there, there is actually two breaks. Not ideal, not great sort of thing. Um, so there's that. Um, but then she went on to say that the breaks aren't actually the bad bit and um, they should heal relatively quickly. She then went on to the bad bit, which is uh, that the the sack that sits round these bones um, has actually ruptured. So I have to do a little teehee every time I tell people that I've ruptured a sack. Um, whereas the bones, you're looking three to four weeks to heal. The sack uh, itself is a six week heal. I'm like, awesome. That's 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 amazing. Um, I took a list of questions um, with me. She gave me a load of exercises to do to help speed things up. It is very much a break that needs to move to heal. So um, motion is the lotion, as Mark Bell would say. Um, I had this list of questions. So it's like, uh, you know, first one was how long? Obviously she answered that. Second one I was like, uh, when can I get back to running? She's like, yes, I saw that you've done it running. Uh, three weeks. I was like, okay, that's not too bad. Uh, weightlifting, so like lightweight, you can do in about three weeks. Uh, anything heavy or anything above your head, three months. So that was a bit of a a crushing blow. Um, she, I asked her about driving, three weeks. I asked her about um, what else did I ask? Oh, excuse me. Um, oh, yeah, I'd had to self-certify. So I asked her about a sick note, which uh, she gave me a sick note to cover the time for the bones to heal. Um, so that was that. She gave me another sling for when I'm doing exercises. Um, and that was that. Sent me on my way. Managed to get back to the car with no ticket. So that was cool. Um, so I'm signed off work. Now I've always been one of those people who's very much in the camp of, oh, if I ever broke a bone, almost like, like, like some kind of weird excitement, like, oh, if I ever brought, broke a bone, here's what I would do. And there's a lot of, um. In that, in that scenario, there's a lot of reading involved. I'd do a lot of reading. Um, I'd, I'd really get into playing computer games. Um, you know, take the opportunity to sit down and actually play games and enjoy computer games. 
um, catch up on TV watching that I, that I don't get the opportunity to do, um, rest and heal up and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, the reality of breaking a bone is very different. To that. The reality is I go to a lot of supermarkets, um, feel like I have less time than I did previously. Um, yeah, I just go to a lot of shops. Um, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of like an insight into um, Leanne's world. Land's life when I'm working and stuff. It's just a lot of shops. Today was a prime example. By the time I actually sat down to eat something for the first time today, it was quarter to four in the afternoon. Now there's a, there is a bigger story there, but ultimately, stuff takes longer these days, and quarter to four. In the afternoon. So, um, yeah, the the imagination of being off work versus the reality of being off work are very different. So much so that I think I read less now than I did before breaking a bone. I do read a lot less these days, and it is one of those things that has actually been kind of... Um, Upsetting me is not the right word, um, but I don't know what is the right word. Um, it's one of those things that I feel like, very much like I've had to make time for other things in my life. Um, I really am going to have to look up when I can start to fit actual reading time in. I used to read like, you know, read a chapter of a book, that way you know you're getting through it. And now it's like, some days I'm like, I read two pages of a book today, didn't I do well? Um, so I do feel like there's a bit of a, I need to make time for all aspects of my life. Um, so one of the things that I, um, committed to very, very early on, very much at the start of this whole process, broken bone sort of thing, um, is that I've still been getting up early. So... Half five comes round, alarm goes off, get up, turn the alarm off, immediately get back into bed. Um, but then, when the next alarm goes off at quarter to six, up and out of bed. Like I say, things take a lot longer these days, so the, just simply getting dressed, uh, getting downstairs, shoes on, um, putting a jacket on takes so long. Because I can't put, can't put both arms in uh, and zipping it up with one hand problem so go through all that do all that sort of stuff out the door not running currently so i've got to wait three weeks on the running um, but i am walking um walking is nearly as good as running um so i walk between four and a half and five miles in the morning take the dog for a two mile walk um, dog's not a big fan at the moment. He's like, I was happy just doing a mile and a bit. What's this two mile nonsense? Um, try and get as many steps in during the day as I can. A variety of different things. Going to a lot of shops is where I get a lot of my steps. Uh, and then I know that there'll be a two mile walk at the back end of the day to walk the dog. And fingers crossed, uh, over the course of the day, I can still get my numbers as if I was, you know, before I was, before I had an injury, before I broke my arm. Um, which I feel is kind of good. Um, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be in the camp of, I broke a bone, so now I'm going to not do anything. Uh, the, the, for me, for me personally, there is this, there is this sort of risk that I will just sit down, do nothing, balloon, and then once I get to the other side of it, go, oh, now I've got an extra stone I need to lose that I was already struggling to lose weight, so now I've got all that to do, sort of thing. So, um, 
there's been that. Um, recently, I've had to embrace the power nap. Um, about three o'clock on an afternoon, all of a sudden, it sometimes feels like narcolepsy. It's what I imagine narcolepsy is like. There'll just be a point in the day where I'm like, I have to go to sleep now. Funnily enough, never when I go to bed on a night time. I imagine the two are connected. Um, but yeah, the power nap. I had a power nap yesterday that I think was five minutes. And that power nap managed to get me through to four o'clock in the morning. I'll explain more about that in a bit. Um, I read a book recently that was one of these, you need to get up at five o'clock in the morning and, and, and get after it, you know, win the day by winning the morning sort of thing. Um, very much one of the reasons that I, that I was doing, that I am doing all of this. Um, but it also, on the flip side of that, was like, listen to your body. If you need a power nap, have a power nap. And I went, okay. So um, I've had to embrace the power nap. Sometimes a power nap, it, it just sorts you right out. And other times, it's the worst possible thing you can do. Um, so you really do have to gauge what's best. Like I say, with, with healing this broken bone, there's been a lot of points in time where it's been very much a, I need to sleep and I need to sleep now. Um, one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that I ended up having to ask the consultant about because it was the weirdest thing I noticed that I was having to go to the little boys room a lot um, one example that I keep saying to people is that um, before getting in the shower one day I went to the toilet when I got out of the shower I went to the toilet and when I got dressed and ready to leave the house I went to the toilet and I was like, uh, um, you know, going to the toilet a lot is a concern for certain medical conditions. Um, I was like, oh, that's going to be typical. I break my arm and then they tell me that I've got diabetes or something like that. So I brought it up with the consultant. I was like, I don't know if this is a thing, but I seem to be going to the toilet a lot. And she was like, yep, that's a thing. She was like, it's calories. I'm like, what? So like you're burning a lot of calories because your body's repairing, your body's healing. So it needs a lot of calories and it's burning a lot of calories. And then the waste is coming out as water. And I was like, it is literally water that is coming out of me. But yes, it's... Um, I was like, also, funnily enough, I have noticed that I've been eating more. Like my body's like, feed me. I need food. Um, so yeah, super random, super weird, but is a thing. Um, so, why was I up till four o'clock in the morning, I hear you ask? Um, anybody who listens to more than just this podcast on, on the network might, um, listen to the NFL podcast, and if you listen to the NFL podcast, you'll know that it was the, uh, Super Bowl, Philadelphia, Eng Philadelphia, England, Jesus, Philadelphia Eagles took on the Kansas City Chiefs. I won't go through any results on that one, even though by the time you get this, it'll be weeks past, uh, mostly because I want you to go and listen to the NFL podcast. So, um, Super Bowl, baby. Uh, we had some people around. Um, Harriet and Sky came... Um, and that was that. We sat and watched the Super Bowl. I, like I said, had a five-minute power nap in the afternoon, knowing full well that that definitely was not going to be enough to get me through to whatever time in the morning. Um, turns out, absolutely was enough. Um, yes, there was a lot of caffeine involved, but I feel that that's just part of the course, really. Uh... I kind of view the Super Bowl as the last point of the year where you can have a bit of blowout food-wise. So I'd kind of psych myself up to having a bit of a feed because it's all downhill from here. 
Um, so, uh, takeaway was ordered, takeaway was consumed. Uh, I had a little bit. Uh, and then there was uh, some some sweets and chocolate later. Nom, 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 nom. It was a good time, good thing. One of the things that was super weird uh, was that I put various tiny little bets, like we're talking like 25p bets, on various aspects of the Super Bowl. And by the end, when they announced the MVP, uh, I had I'd won £30, uh, which is almost completely unheard of. Um, so there was that. Um, yeah, I had, had a good feed. It was a good time. Possibly, probably, potentially, one of, if not the best game of American football, um, certainly I've ever seen. And that was that. So, I got up today, uh, a little bit later than usual, by a few hours, and uh, that was that. So, walk the dog. Then I went for a walk. So, six miles later, then, uh, oh, that's right, went to a shop, went to Max's, because not, not to, you know, peek behind the curtain, but it's the day before Valentine's Day, and I needed some steak. So I went to Max's Spencer's and bought some steaks. Um, super unimpressed in Max's Spencer's today for a multitude of reasons. Mostly their, uh, their steak selection was terrible. Um, so, went and got some steaks, went and got coffee, came back, and I was like, I can't drink this coffee until I get weighed. So, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but last week I put on quite a bit of weight, um, from the week before. Thought it was potentially something to do with, like, swelling, um, and stuff like that. So, um, like I said, I've been getting up, getting out, getting the walking done, trying to get the numbers every day. So... Wasn't sure how it was going to go. Obviously, I ate a lot last night and I was getting weighed today. It was later in the day and I made sure not to eat or drink anything. So it was potentially dehydration. Um, but between last week and this week, including a takeaway, I managed to lose two pounds. And I was just, just absolutely blown away. I was very much like, what? how much weight would I have lost? If I hadn't have eaten what I, eat, what I ate last night. I was like, that's incredible. It's amazing. Oh my God, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful news. Wasn't until the point where I was telling Leanne about my weight loss. And she was like, yeah. Mm, it's probably uh, probably muscle loss. I was like. Oh. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Obviously, I haven't worked out for uh, best, you know, nearly 10 days at this point. So, yeah, there's probably quite a high chance that it's it's muscle loss. So that was super depressing. Um, that's the, the 20 something, 27 and a half minutes in. That's the week, uh, which means that the rest is going to go real quick. Um, Movies. We put a movie on before the Super Bowl last night. It's a movie I've kind of seen before. It's a movie I know I've reviewed before. Didn't get it finished, so I can't review that. And I don't think I've watched anything else. My um, time on the treadmill has been greatly reduced. Uh, down to nothing. Which is one of those. It's a bit of a weird one. I think with all the outdoor walking I'm do, doing... Outdoor walking kind of seems like free. Um, it, it's probably just not another one of those weird ones, weird in my head, but I feel like if I can go out and walk for free, then why would I go and get on the treadmill for free? The question would be, well, I can go out and run for free, so why would I get on the treadmill and run? Um, just one of those weird things in my brain, but hey, it does mean that I'm not really watching any movies at the moment. TV series, on the other hand, well, let me tell you, I watch some TVs, some TVs, 
I suppose. Watch more than one TV. Um, I watched episode six, seven, and eight, which was the last episode of Welcome to Chippendales. <sighs> Unlike Pam and Tommy, I found Welcome to Chippendales quite difficult to watch because I couldn't really. What I realised was I couldn't sympathise with the main characters because they were both completely unlikable and not super intelligent. They were just just dumb idiots. They were just controlled by greed, but not even greed in some aspects. It was just stupidity. So it just became... Like, difficult to watch when you just think that the main characters are idiots. Um, there was like, it was a couple of good characters. And ultimately, you know, as far as the, the actors are concerned, their acting is, is good. Um, but... In some... Oh, excuse me. This is what happens when you go to bed at four o'clock. In some ways, it, it, it was quite... It was just quite hard to watch. At least with Pam and Tommy. And I'm only comparing it because that was the thing that I watched before that was of a similar vein. You know, it was on Disney and that sort of stuff. Um, At least with Pam and Tommy, where one of the main characters was annoying as hell. The program was very watchable. Whereas this felt more like, here's a load of people who are greedy and dumb enjoy and it was kind of difficult to enjoy it um did get it finished did get it watched um the ending was kind of interesting uh also land looked it up and a lot of the stuff in it were very close to what actually happened which is kind of nice in some ways and not in others um so there's that aspect um so that was that had a, had a had an experience um, about a week ago, maybe. I was flicking through Amazon Prime, and there was a section on Amazon Prime that said, "Here's some here's a list of stuff that's uh, that's expiring in the next thirty days." I was like, "Oh, I wonder if there's like a movie or something that I could watch before it goes off, or should there have been stuff that I should have been watching up to this point before it goes off Prime." So I started looking through the list, and I came across um, something called Six, which I presumed was a movie. Um, the picture was uh, some uh, some sort of soldier, and I'm like, oh, you know, what's this? Where I'm at at the moment, kind of um, kind of interested in that sort of stuff. A lot of the stuff I've been watching and reading is kind of in that uh, world. So I was like, oh, what's this? Turned out not a movie. TV show so I was like ah, that's no good if it's on a list of this is expiring in the next 30 days obviously I don't know when it's gone on that that time so how long have I got started reading like the, the information on Prime about this TV show I'm like ooh that sounds good that sounds interesting oh that sounds right on my street um, I was like, I've got to roll the dice on this. So I started watching Six. Six is called Six because it's based on, uh, it's fictional, but it's based on um, uh, SEAL Team Six. Starts out with a couple of um, missions that these guys are doing. And then I think the, the sort of the missions at the start are set uh, in the past. Because one of their team goes a little bit crazy, does a couple of questionable things on a mission, and I think basically gets booted from the SEALs, from the military, and that's that. He goes off to become a private contractor, private security, mercenary basically, Um, and no surprises, an alcoholic. He ends up in a situation where he's being paid to protect a school 
and uh, it's an all-girls school, female teacher. Uh, a load of guys come out of the jungle and take them all hostage. But it turns out that there's more to it. One of the um, kind of crimes or war crimes, I suppose you'd call it, that this guy committed while he was a SEAL is connected to this kidnapping. And that's kind of how it goes. So the rest of the team, the rest of SEAL Team 6, find out that he's been in this situation, that he's been kidnapped along with a load of children. And they go about trying to get him back. And that's basically the program. There are two series. First series is eight episodes. I think the second series is ten episodes. Um, And I watched... All of series one, because I felt I was against the against the clock on this one. Um, really good, really good TV series, really enjoyable. A couple of guys um, that I recognise from stuff. One of them's um, is it Walton? I thought it was Walter, but Walton Goggins done a lot of um, movies. Uh, if you ever need a cowboy. A modern day cowboy, give him a call. Pretty sure he was like a bad guy in the film Looper, maybe. Um, he's in it as the guy that's been kidnapped. A couple of other guys I kind of recognise, meant to look them up, never got around to it. Uh, it's got uh, Ruxin's wife from the League and the maid. She was the maid in um, My Name is Earl. She's in it as one of the wives of one of the seals. A um, couple of episodes where it was a bit like, hey, we're doing this, but let's get a bit of backstory on these guys. Which felt a bit forced and felt a bit unnecessary. Wasn't entirely sure how it drove the story on. Felt a bit like filler in some ways. But past that, got straight back into the action. I did wonder how much they'd spent on these episodes. It's done by, um, I'm pretty sure it's done by a History Channel. So, don't know what sort of budgets they're throwing around. But, can't imagine it was cheap to make. Um, very good series, very enjoyable. I watched all eight episodes and I very much enjoyed it. I have started the second season, series, season, whatever we're going to call them. However... Um, started the other day and watched like two minutes of the first episode and then watched half of the first episode this evening still working on the principle time is a factor so it's possibly one of those I'm hoping to get the second series finished there isn't any more past the second series I don't know what the reason in there is maybe it wasn't I mean I'd never heard of it up until it was free on Prime so there was that. Was one thing I noticed must be like, Ugh. Um, second episode of watching the opening credits, and it was like, oh, pr- produced by the Weinstein Company. It's like, oh. And then the next credit was like, a uh, list of producers, and the top producer was Harvey Weinstein. I was like, Jesus. I thought everything he'd ever touched had been scrubbed off the face of the planet. So that's TV stuff. As far as uh, computer games, been a bit of a bit of a shift, bit of a move on the computer game front. Um, so, I think I mentioned, possibly mentioned last week that I'd um, noticed that the um, New Game Plus update had gone in for the Callisto Protocol. Um, I think I'd mentioned that I'd started playing it. If not, that was the situation. I have played through it, um, managed to get nearly all of the upgrades for all of the weapons and things, um, but did end up finishing it again. Um, kind of messed up a little bit towards the back end. I was annoyed at myself because to try and get all the upgrades, I'd started selling um, ammunition, which is kind of a big no-no. Unless you've got so much, you can't move. It's kind of a big no-no in games. Um, so I was kicking myself when I got to the end and I had a big boss to fight and was like, I've got no ammo. Now what do I do? 
Um, as it was, I had enough to do what I needed to do, and that was that. Um, me being me, I honestly would have started it again straight away to just finish off getting those upgrades. But a game I'm going to come on to uh, um, has stopped that. Um, I'm still playing Need for Speed, Need for Speed Unbound, still playing. I think I'm on to the third week now. Bit weird to explain if you've never played it or if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's done in weeks. You've got a week to earn enough money to enter a qualifier to ultimately. There are four qualifiers once you've done all four. You get to go to some big race to take down the person that you're trying to take down. So each week you've got to try and earn money, try and win cars to build your car garage up, buy upgrades as well as keeping money to be able to pay to enter the qualifiers. I think I've explained that enough. Um, the upside to it is it's still good, it's still entertaining, it's still enjoyable. Uh, my cars are are quite good i'm quite liking where my cars are at any opportunity i get to try and win a new car i'll take but then it's <laughs> each car is kind of like a financial burden so there's that to take into account um on the flip side because i've been playing it for quite a while now there are aspects that it is becoming a little bit repetitive with some of the races obviously there's only so many courses in the world and so many races you can do um but I'm trying to alternate, play Need for Speed one day, play a different game, which may get mentioned shortly, on another day. Uh, but still, still currently, touch wood and all that, enjoying it. Um, I got, it's kind of a weird one, kind of got it for Leon, also for my eldest to play. And I also want to play it. So we did get uh, the Hogwarts Legacy game. Um, I understand and appreciate that there was a supposed boycott going on for this game. And the creator of the Harry Potter universe. Um, as it was by the time Harry Potter... By the time Hogwarts Legacy was released. And all that. It was the highest selling game. Um, so the boycott clearly wasn't actually that much of a factor um, I have not played it however I have been in the same room with people persons who have played it and were playing it um, so I can't really give any kind of hands on review I can tell you what I've seen what I've seen it looks good it's very pretty it looks nice it looks like it plays quite well um, there's some spell casting involved, um, some sort of fighting with magic. Um, I'm yet to see any of the flying. Um, so I can't comment on that. Um, but it all looks very good. I'm kind of looking forward to getting getting my go, getting my hands on it, seeing how that goes. Um what I was going to say. I was going to say something about it. Oh, that's going to annoy me now. I was going to say one thing. One thing is... No, it's completely gone, I'm afraid. This is why we're supposed to make notes, people. Hmm. Anyway, might come back to me in a minute. Uh, last game for the week. Uh, I got a new game. Which is an old game, but it's a new game. Uh, I finally, not finally, because it's only been out like a week or something. I got Dead Space. The remake of Dead Space. I got it. I wanted it. I was excited for it. Um, promised myself I wasn't going to play it until a certain point. Uh, finished Callisto. That was the main thing. I wanted to get Callisto finished. I wanted to play some more Need for Speed. Um, but Saturday night came around and it's like, it's the perfect Saturday night game. Weirdly, not loving it. And I know 
I know myself enough to know that there are aspects that it's just me being a grumpy old man and saying things like, it's not as good as it used to be. But there are aspects of it that aren't as good as it used to be. Um, Sam had asked me earlier what what I meant when I said that things weren't as good. Um, so I said, here's the things. Uh, the little video screen with, that comes up with like live video call type thing. Um, it used to just be there and you could... You could just go about your day and it was just there. Now it's very much of an obstruction, which seems like it's a backward step. If it had been the other way around, you'd be like, oh, that's an improvement. Um, They've added security levels to doors and lockers. So you need to get like security clearance to open stuff. Just annoying and... So far, largely pointless. It seems like a really weird addition. Um, They are forever turning the lights off in areas. Um, Anytime you turn the lights off, all you're saying to me is that you don't have enough confidence in the, the game itself and how well it looks. So you're trying to hide behind, oh, the lights have gone off. Oh, it's spooky now, isn't it? No, it just doesn't look as good. And it's just annoying. Um, Running is slightly slower than it was in the original. Weird choice. And another one that's about time. It takes longer to save in this one than it used to. Really weird. I know it seems petty, but you could save in the original really quickly. But in this one just takes that little bit longer so you feel like you're you're just kind of hanging around a little bit uh when i first started playing it i was very much in the camp of i don't think i like this and i had to sort of readjust my thinking about it because i was like that's just you being like i like the original better as i've played more i have found more enjoyment in it um but those things, um, like Sam was like, they sound like very minor things. And my response was, they are minor things. But when you add them all together, it's a little bit annoying. Um, it's one of those things. I'll obviously keep playing it. The upgrade system's quite... There's, there's quite a lot to upgrade. Definitely not getting it done on a playthrough. Definitely not getting it done in a couple of playthroughs. Probably looking three, four and beyond playthroughs for that side of things. So I imagine that I'll be playing it at least a couple of times. Um, So we'll see what that looks like. Um, That's it. Never did think, never did remind, Jesus. Never did remember what I was going to say about Hogwarts Legacy. So I might have to save that for next week. Um... Until then, I bid you adieu. So there you go, what do you think of that? Short but sweet. Not that short or sweet. It was less painful than previous episodes, I guess. Before you go, please do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Drop reviews. Check out the website, cookiehouse.com. Uh, There you've got social media links and an email button to get in touch with us. Uh, Share the podcast around. Word of mouth is a wonderful thing when you're trying to get the podcast out there in the world. So anybody you can pass it on to, we appreciate you doing that. That's it for this one. Till next time, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to this episode of CookieCast.